In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people. Today is Thursday, the 24th of December, 2020. It is the last day of the season of Advent, Church Year B. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed. Good morning. And thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus, and do not delay, that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and relief in your coming, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We use the readings of the morning mass of the last day of advent the first reading is taken from the second book of samuel chapter 7 verses 1 to 5 verses 8 to 11 and verse 16 the gospel is taken from saint luke chapter 1 verses 67 to 79 i read from the gospel at that time Zechariah, the father of John, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare His ways, to give knowledge of salvation to His people in the forgiveness of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Today we meditate on the theme We are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. Dear friends in Christ, for the last time and for the last day, we hear the Advent hymns. For the last time and for the last day, we see the purple vestments and the purple linens in church. Today is the last day of the season of Advent, Church Year B. The Gospel passage is Zechariah's hymn of thanksgiving, known as or popularly called the Benedictus. It is one of the three great canticles in St. Luke's Gospel, the other two being the Magnificat of the Blessed Virgin Mary, confer Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55, and the other is the Nunc Dimittis of Simeon, confer Luke chapter 2, verses 29 to 32. The Benedictus was Zechariah's song of thanksgiving on the occasion of the birth of his son, John the Baptist. The canticle is divided into two parts. The first part, that is verses 68 to 75, is a song of thanksgiving for the realization of the messianic hopes of the Jewish nation. Israel had longed for liberation from Roman rule and oppression. The time for their liberation was at hand. Their deliverance was near. This was pointed out by Zechariah as the fulfillment of God's oath to Abraham. God had visited his people and had redeemed them. He had raised up a mighty savior in the house of David, his servant, just as he promised by the lips of holy men, his prophets from of old. Such a savior who would free them from their enemies. God had been mindful and faithful to his promise and love. The second part is an address to John the Baptist, the little child, the messenger of the Lord, Zechariah's own son. John the Baptist plays such a central role to be a prophet to go before the Lord, to prepare his way before him. Zechariah, in this second part, accepts John's mission. He unites himself with him and with the mission of his son and blesses him. Dearly beloved of God, we are a Benedictus people. Benedictus is the Latin for blessed We are a blessed people. We have been blessed by God. Zechariah's song should be our own. We should always sing the Benedictus. We should bless God for his immense love and mercy shown us. God has visited us. He has come to us in human form. He has sent us his son as a mighty savior for us to free us from all our troubles. Therefore, Our mouths should never cease giving praise and thanksgiving to God. We should be full of joy. We are indeed a blessed and happy people. We are just a few days away to the end of this year 2020. You now see every reason to thank God and to sing the song of praise just like Zechariah. Many things have happened, dear friends. Many things have happened. We have been through thick and thin. We have been through tough moments, yet here we are, still alive and kicking. It has not been all smooth, but at least there is reason to thank God. God assures us, tomorrow, in fact beginning this evening, when we begin the vigil, Jesus Christ our Savior will be given to us. He will come to save us. He will come to give us life. He will come to give us joy. He will come to give us happiness. That amidst the turbulence we have been through this year 2020, He comes to save us. He comes to give us joy. And so like Zechariah, we sing the song of thanksgiving. Yes, God has come to visit us. He has been mindful of His promise. He has been mindful of His oath. He has come to redeem us. He has sent a Savior to save us and to free us from all our calamities. There is hope, beloved. At the end of the tunnel, there is light. And therefore, we do not give up. We are not carried away in despair. We are not given into fear or to fright. No, our Lord comes 
to bring us salvation. He comes to bring us joy and happiness. So therefore, beloved, we are a blessed people. Count your blessings, name them one after the other, and you will see every reason why you should be a Benedictus person. Let us thank God and give him praise and honor. In the second part of the Benedictus, Zechariah unites himself with the mission of John the Baptist. His son has been chosen to be the messenger of the Savior. And Zechariah unites himself with John's mission. He accepts the mission for the son and tells him, You little child, you shall be called the prophet of the Lord the Most High, for you shall go ahead of the Lord to prepare his ways before him. This teaches us one great lesson especially to parents. Your children have a mission that has been given to them by God. Your role, therefore, is to accept the mission that God has given them, to journey with them, to unite yourself with them, and to help them to realize God's plan for them. How unfortunate that many parents want to change the plan that God has for their children. They rather want to impose their own plan on their children. No, beloved. No, God has a plan for each and every one of us. And as a parent, your role is to accept God's plan for your child, to unite yourself with them and to help them accomplish God's plan for their lives. For those many times that parents have attempted to thwart God's plan for their children, wanting their children to be who they want them to be and not who God wants them to be, Zechariah teaches us a great lesson. He accepts John's mission. He unites himself with him. He unites himself with John's mission and helps him to accomplish God's plan for him. Dear parents, you have to be like Zechariah. Help your children to accomplish God's plan for them. Your role is to be their helpers, to be their guardians, to be their guide, to help them to fulfill God's plan for them. Do not force them into your own plan. And that is what has happened to many children who have met frustration, who have met disaster, perhaps because their parents were forcing a plan on them. And for you, dear children, when your parents help you to accomplish God's plan for them, and for you, listen, because your parents are like Zechariah. They are there to help you, to give you good advice, because they want the best for you. But if you think that you know and are more knowledgeable than them, you would find yourself in harm's way and that is what has happened to many children. John himself did not know exactly what his mission was, but his father helped him to accomplish his plan. Children, listen to your parents and to their good advice. And you parents, like Zechariah, help your children to accomplish not your plan, but God's plan for them. Thank you, beloved. We have come to the end of the season of Advent. It is just a few hours left and we shall get into the celebrations of Christmas. We hope that you have prepared yourself adequately for Christ's coming. We wish each and every one of you a very blessed celebration of Christmas, especially as we begin with the vigil. For those of you who, for the sake of COVID-19, will not have the opportunity to come together as a family, we are united with you in your difficulty and in your suffering. God has not abandoned you. He has not left you alone. He has sent his Savior. He has sent his Son to come to save us. And we are hopeful that with the coming of Christmas, God will bring a solution to all these troubles that we go through. Be courageous and be happy. Be a Benedictus person, for our Savior is coming to meet us. We wish each and every one of you a very blessed Christmas season. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>